Second Samuel chapter 15. And it came to pass after this, running into Absalom again, type of Antichrist, that he prepared him chariots and horse army, and fifty men to run before him. And they went on ahead of Absalom. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. This would be your, your town hall, your city hall. This is where the judgment. This is where uh, your government business would be done. This is where Boaz met and got the property off his family from Ruth. This is where Jeremiah had to go through Beirut to get his uncle's property. Transactions. Official business were done at the gates. Lot sat at the gate to be a judge. It was so that when any man had a controversy, came to the king for judgment. So King David is judge of the land. And when two parties had trouble, had a problem, had a suit, they would come to this gate and they would be allowed to go to David under these conditions. They came to King Judge, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. So who are you? I'm a Jewish person. You can go before the king. Now, I don't know if it, Gentiles were not allowed, but are you of Manasseh? Are you of Judah? Are you of Dan? Are you of, who are you of? What city? Hebron? Bethel, Bethlehem, and I had something in my mind right now and I lost it. And Absalom said unto him, See, the matters are good and right. So we also see this in King Solomon. After God's grant of knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding, one of them lacking, you have two harlots that have two babies come up before him, and one of them overslept the baby. And exchange the live baby for the dead baby. And he's judging. This is one of the acts of a king. In Israel. And. Absalom here. He questions the people before they go for the king. What do you have? What's your problem? Who are you? Alright. Your matter is worthy to go before a king. Your, thy matters are good and right. But there is no man deputed, that's the first time that word, and only time that word shows up, excuse me, it's to point as a substitute. Oh, is that almost like our advocate, Jesus Christ? Out of the words of Absalom, so there's no man that can stand in your court. There's no man that deputed of the king to hear thee. There's no office of, of judgment around David's throne. I don't know why that's not so, because the Bible says in the law that the priests, the Levites, were to be judges. And the king. And David has been sure of the word of God, except the matter of carrying the ark on the new cart. So I don't know if I can trust what Absalom's saying in here. But then again, why wouldn't the people go to the Levites if they were already established as judges? Something's going on in Israel right now. It's not right. Because the Levites were to be the judges. They were the ones of God. They were the ones that, Lord God, I've heard these two cases. I don't know who's right or wrong. And I've got to appeal to the, the Supreme God, not the Supreme Court. And who was closer but the Levites and the priests for that office? Surely not Absalom. This guy's not close to God. That's a type of antichrist. So Absalom said, moreover, oh, that I were made judge in the land. Oh, I want to be a judge. Oh, as we already said, the qualification, you're not a priest. You sure do not have the aptitudes of being a judge. You're a criminal yourself. That every man, every man, which has a suit or cause, see where the word comes. You go to court, you have a suit, 
and that comes out of the Bible. Our nation was not founded on the Bible. Then why are the Bible words in our government listing? To file suit. He has a lawsuit. It is here out of the 2 Samuel 15, verse 4. Out of the mouth of Absalom. Or cause might come unto me. I mean, you're no other. You're the only one. Is not your father capable? And I would do him justice. You mean a murderer and an arsonist. That's your characteristics, Absalom. Absalom now is on the verge of, I'm going to take over this government. I'm going to usurp the authority of David, my father. Do you know anywhere else a being done that, according to Isaiah 14? You see that throne over there? I want it. I'm going to see that throne, and that's exactly what Absalom is doing, what, what Lucifer did. I'm not happy where I am. I'm not happy as a choir director of all the angels. That's not enough. Because they're singing about God. They're not singing about me. Oh, David's judging everybody in Israel. That's not good enough. I want to be the judge. I want them to come to me. I want them not to go to my father, but I want to usurp the authority of my father. That's Satan. That's Lucifer. A murderer. John 8:44. An arsonist. Jesus said that God set the flames of hell for the devil and his angels. A fire that never go out. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him, this is uh, Absalom, to do him of, of beats, worship, bow down usually, we shake hands or fist bump, or whatever you want to call it. He put forth his hand and took it and kissed him. There's the Pope. In reverse. Now what the Pope does when he goes to these nations, he puts his hand out and the leader of that nation grabs his hand and kisses it. And it's a shame that non-Catholic priests, except for John F. Kennedy, has to kiss and bow down before that, that porker in Italy of a religion that has killed Christians and Bible Christians. But that's what the Pope does right there. There he is, Solomon. I mean, there, uh, Absalom. The moves of the Pope is done by Absalom. Absalom is a great kisser. Judas was a kisser. How many people have been kissed to, to get the authority of Absalom? Judas walked up to God of all creation, Jesus Christ, and kissed him to turn him over to his trial. And on this matter did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. See, they came to David. But what? So Absalom sold the hearts of the men of Israel. He absurd the authority of David and took over. That's Lucifer. Now Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Let's go back to chapter 14, verse 25 real quick. The previous chapter. But in all Israel there was none to be so praised as Absalom. He has already been praised. Look how wonderful and great he is. Now he has stolen the hearts of the people. He has asserted the authority. The Bible we read in Ezekiel 28, devil's beauty. He's wise. And how many hearts of men has he stolen? The Bible says many will go through the broad way that leads to destruction. And it came to pass after 40 years. I don't know what the reference is. That Absalom said unto the king, after all he's done, he walks up to the king. He's usurping David's authority and he walks up to the king. Do you know where that happens in the Bible? Job 1 and Job 2, devil walks right up to God. He's tried to assert the authority of God and Job 1 and 2, he walks right up to God. You got to study, Sol uh, I keep saying Solomon, Absalom. I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebrew. I don't know if this is so or not. For thy servant 
thy servant? You mean the ones that usurp the authority of the government? Judas was a servant and assert the authority of Jesus Christ. Vow to vow unto uh, while I yeah, while I abode in Gershom in Syria. Ooh, you know what Syria is. Gershom, we already studied that. Saying, if the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. That's a lie. He's going to do anything but serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he rose and went to Hebron. Uh, Hebron is awfully not near Gershom. Hebron is where David reigned for a little while. I believe three and a half. I don't know how many. Three, 33 years on that. But Absalom sent spies. Here we go. Throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, Now here it comes, here he comes. He sends men out. And Paul writes to the Christians and says that Satan, the devil, has his own ministers. As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, after the trumpet, Now, for the, for the Christian, it's the trump. The trumpet is a anti-cause of what the law said about the, the ram's horns, the trumpets, for the be calling of the assembly, the calling of war, the alerts. So, uh, Absalom has his own trumpet. He has his own ways of doing things. Then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebrew. There's the assumption. There he is. He's now taken over the government. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called by him, I assume. And they went up in simplicity and they knew not anything. So they're following Absalom being simple. They do not know what Absalom has planned. Do you realize the three and a half years that Antichrist is going to be here? And they're going to have no idea who this guy is. He's giving the world peace with just a bow with no arrow. Oh, everybody's in unity. Everybody's together. Everybody's happy. Everybody is being fed. Everybody has health care. I don't know. And they don't realize what's coming up in three and a half years amidst the Jacob's trouble. And Absalom sent to Ahithophel, that's a hard name, the Gibeonite, the Gileite, David's counselor. That's the first time that word shows up. This is a man, not the right hand man of David. But one of the top 20, I would say, not, I won't say top 10, but this is somebody David would say, Ahithophel, come here, sit down. And he would probably have other counselor. All right, I want to do this. Bump, 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 here it is. All right, what do you think? And they would give counsel, they would say, yeah, David, that's good, go for it. Yeah, David, it needs to be worked on a little bit. It's not too well right now. Well, David, that's stupid. I don't know if they'd say that to a king, but no, don't do that. That's what a counselor is. Okay? You have the schools you're supposed to, when I grew up, I don't know what schools today, but the school that my wife and I grew up, you go counselor, you sit down and say, you know, I want to pursue this career path. Or next year in class, they got these three classes and... I don't know which one I should take. I don't know which one would benefit me. And they would talk to you and they would listen to you and they would try to scope out a, a career that you're looking at and they would advise you, yeah, this is the courses. No, this is not the courses. This is what you need to do as a counselor. They're a help. They're an aid. So Absalom set up a hit to the Gilead, David's counselor, David's counselor. 
So Absalom is going after the people of David as Lucifer went after the angels, God's messengers, to go on his side. From his city, even from Gilhol. While he offered sacrifices, oh, look at that, we're religious. And the conspiracy, the first time that word shows up, <laughs> interesting place, conspiracy, was strong. For the people increased continually after Absalom. He's getting the many of the Broadway. How's that? How, how, how else can I put it? He's gaining the population. He's the majority. David has become the minority. He wants the mass of people. He wants everybody unity under him. How else can I say it? The world is going that way today. If you're good and Bible believing and, and right, we got to get rid of you. You make us look bad. Let's go under one banner. And there came a messenger to David saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. Now that right there. Joab began this. David, bring back your son, Absalom. Now, what part Joab plays in all this, I have no idea, but Absalom would not been there had it not been for Joab and that little VBS play, the skit, that fooled David, and now look where David is. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise! Oh, I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for David to call for him and say, blow that trump. Come up hither. I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that day. That's where I leave the world. And we'll leave the world with Absalom in control. And guess what? Guess what? How do I believe the Bible? David's coming back. Jesus Christ came died, suffered, died, was buried, arose again. This world's in chaos with a few messengers out there telling people, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But Satan's coming to rule. Oh, but Jesus Christ is coming back. But before Satan rules and takes finally over and does what he has to do, arise. Those that are asleep in the Lord, they shall arise. Those that are alive and caught up shall be caught up. That's a ride. Go to the clouds. That's a ride. Yet the Bible says later on, you know, the Lord raptures us now. We're unable to finish these studies. David comes back. But as soon as David goes, here comes Satan. And if you don't believe Satan's running around right now, you never witness to the population. You have not had any public ministry. You have not tried to witness to anybody. You have not tried to be a true Bible honoring Christian on your workplace if you don't believe Satan is amongst the world today. Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Look how much power he has. David says, We got to go. You know, you know what Jesus says about his bride when, before Satan comes? You got to go. And you know what his bride is doing right now as we get more and more to, to that time of the rapture? The bride is adulterizing herself with Satan, sleeping in his bed, kissing Satan, bringing all the satanic and worldly garbage into the church. At that point, God's going to say, I've had it. That's enough. Come. Get up here. Face your judgment. Oh, we did it. It was so great. <laughs> Burn it up. Let us flee from for we shall not for we shall not else escape from David was not very good in his English. You know why? He spoke Hebrew. <laughs> but do you see what David's saying about Absalom? And if if Absalom is a type of Antichrist, Jesus said in his own word, except for the very elect's sake. 
Friend, if you're a Gentile and you don't help that Jew, I don't care what you stock up, you're not coming out of that tribulation well. And if you do come out of the tribulation well, you're going to be amongst the goat nations and be cast off into hell. When they say Satan rules and all that, when Satan gets that power by God when the church is removed, you've never seen a world leader going to be like Satan. I don't know what he's going to have, but if you try to do right, you're going to be the main focus of the entire world and you lose your head. Jesus said, David said, make speed, depart. At least he overtake us suddenly. And he said, shall not else escape. Jesus said, except for the very elect's sake. A minimum of 144,000. A minimum. Make speed. Depart. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew, I think, 24. He says, when you see the abomination and desolation, get out! <laughs> and you better pray it's not the Sabbath. You better pray it ain't snow that those airplanes are grounded. Because when you see that, get going. I don't care if you go in your house and get your coat. No, just jump off your roof and go. You're out in the field, leave the cows behind and go. You're making flour, leave it. Go! David says, make haste. Jesus said, make haste. This is important. And I said yesterday, maybe tongue in cheek. I don't know. Maybe God will use these messages during the tribulation for the Jews. I hope he does. And I hope I speak right by the word of God, Jesus Christ, that I may be a comfort that you find out that the Antichrist is there. Get out. Revelation says, come out amongst them. Be ye clean. Make haste. Or make speed to depart. Least he overtake us suddenly. And this is all tribulation passage. And being evil upon us. Being evil. That's the man of sin. That is his being. Evil. Upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. That's what he's going to do. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. Now there's faithful men. All right? Moses and Elias go down there, but you're going to die. And you just imagine Moses going to Elijah. I've done this before. It's okay. I've never died. Oh, but wait to see the resurrection that both of them never, never, ever witnessed in their lifetime. We don't know how Moses went up his body. And the 144,000 going out with Satan hating them. Can you imagine what their life is going to be? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution with life to the 144,000. And the king went forth and all his household after him. And the king, I'm his household, I'm a child of God. I am the bride of Jesus Christ. How about the Jews? He came on his own, his own received him not. Came after him. And the king left ten women. That's interesting. There are ten kings of the Antichrist. Which were concubines. Alright, we got to stop there real quick. Chapter 12, verse 11. I think we did this before, but let's go back. Chapter 12, verse 11. That concubine. That's a clean word for sin. <laughs> I'm you know, checking up. 12, 11. That don't look like it. Anyway. Huh? I'm in first hand. Now. I went too far. Do you have one when you're in the wrong book? It has a big difference. 12, 11. 13. 12, 11. Thus say the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil. You just get that that evil. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Nathan told David is going to happen. I will raise up evil. I'm not raise up a man. I'm not going to raise up your son. 
I'm going to raise up evil. That is the Antichrist, the man of sin. Type Solomon. I mean, I'm never going to get it right. Absalom is. I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. Absalom. And I will take thy wives before thy eyes. Well, there it is. He leaves ten wives, and we're, we'll, there's more to this story. We'll get to it later, but those concubines are wives in the eyes of God. Marriage is when flesh joins flesh. Now, you may call them a concubine, but they're a wife. And the king went, went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place, ready for this one, that was far off. You know where I'm going when when the Antichrist is in power at 666, the mark and all that? You know where I'm going? I'm going to a very far place. In a very, very far place. The distant galaxy of Lucifer taking over the earth. There were certain people who were white and clean that went off to be with, you know, in a movie film. Before the Antichrist is here, the servants of David, I am a servant of David. I am a child of God. I am David's bride, type of Christ. Before that Absalom comes and takes power, guess where I am? Afar off. I don't need to worry about the 666. I'm afar off. How's that? I will be at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't know how long that's going to take. And then I will be in heaven. And then at one time, I will be married to Jesus Christ. We will get on our horseback and we will return. And we will kick Axelon's butt by Jesus Christ alone. I'm afar off. And all his servants passed on beside him. <laughs> How's that? How is that day when we go to the clouds and that moment we gather together all there and say, then we go see Jesus? Who's with us? Are they Jews only? All the servants pass on to the side. And all the Carathites. Who are they? I don't know. People in Africa don't know who we are. And all the Pelothites. I have no idea who in China is saved. And all the Giddites. 600 men which came after him from Gath. Passed on before the king. There's a whole group of people of all the earth, dead and alive, are going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture. After that, then the Antichrist is going to come. Then you need to worry about the mark, mark and all that. Now, we're going to stop there for only the purpose because we're going to break away from the type of the rapture and all that. But David's going to run into some men. He's going to, on his run, we're going to look at it. And it's very interesting to study by itself. But we'll stop right there.